Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Sarazzle Dazzle Physics. In today's session, we're going to be talking about conduction, guys. So put down today's title, it's going to be Conduction, and it's for GCSE Physics, guys. All right, let's get straight into it. So before we start, we need to have a quick recap on how heat is transferred. So scrolling down here, how does heat flow? How does heat flow? Well, heat always flows from hot to cold. I've already made a video about heat transfer. Make sure you've watched it before you watch this one, guys. And the good example that I've drawn over here, here we have a cup of tea and it is 80 degrees Celsius. We've now placed it in an environment which is 5 degrees Celsius. So look carefully. Where is the heat going to flow from and to? So where will the heat flow from and to? Okay, so don't forget, heat always flows from the hot to the cold. So the tea is 80 degrees Celsius. It is a greater temperature than the surroundings, which is 5 degrees Celsius. Therefore, the heat goes from hot to cold. So look, guys, the heat will leave here and travel outwards over there. There we go. There's the heat leaving in this case. That's the worst arrow ever, but I'll just do it again over here. There we go, the heat leaving it here until eventually it will end up being 5 degrees Celsius. So heat always travels from hot to cold. Right, but what exactly is conduction? Well, conduction is one of those ways in which heat can flow. So there are three ways in which heat can be transferred. The three ways are going to be the following. So heat transfer can be via the following three ways. Number one, conduction. Number two, convection. And number three, radiation. So the first one we're going to talk about is conduction. And obviously that's today's title. So conduction is what we're going to be talking about today. And the main thing with conduction is it's the heat transfer via solids. So it's the heat transfer via solids. So let's put that down. So there we go. So heat transfer through solids, that's going to be conduction. So what exactly is conduction? Let's look at the following scenario to get our head around it. Okay, so let's start with the following. Conduction in non-metals, guys. So conduction in non-metals. So let's say here we have a non-metal, as you can see, that is the non-metal over there. And we can see that we have the metal ions inside. So these guys are going to be the metal ions. So these are the metal ions. They're in a fixed arrangement, guys. So they're in a fixed arrangement, obviously, because it's a solid. But what happens now, let's say, for example, if we were to heat one end of it over here. So we're going to heat it on this side over here. What's going to happen to these metal ions? Think about it in terms of their movement. What's going to happen to the metal ions? Okay, so what's going to happen is these metal ions over here, these ones will start to vibrate more. There we go, they're starting to vibrate more. Okay, so start to move, they move a bit more. There we go. Right, so these metal ions have gained kinetic energy, so they've gained kinetic energy and now they're vibrating more. OK, but then look, the metal ions next to it, they will feel those vibrations. So the vibrations will pass on like a set of dominoes, guys. So there, these ones start to now jiggle around as well. So these ones start vibrating a bit more. Good. And then eventually, with all of them in along here, these ones vibrating, these ones vibrating, their energy has now been passed along all of them, all the way across here. Yeah, so look, the heat is now flowing through the non-metal all the way across here. So the heat is now flowing through the non-metal all the way across. This is how heat is conducted in non-metal. So as you can see, the metal ions gain kinetic energy, they vibrate, and they pass on this energy on until the whole material is heated up. Let's put that down. Okay, so here's a summary. Metal ions gain kinetic energy when heated. They vibrate more, notice they vibrate more, not that they start vibrating because they were already vibrating, and then they're passing on their energy to the nearby ions. Eventually, the heat is transferred through the whole material. Like a set of dominoes, guys, you knock the first ones and then pass it on all the way through. So that is going to be conduction in a non-metal. So what about conduction in a metal? What's that like? Right, so what about conduction in a metal? How is it different? Well, look, it's roughly the same, but the main difference between non-metals and metals is a metal has loads of free electrons everywhere. So there's loads of free electrons, guys, everywhere. So here I'll draw one. I'll just label that. So this, if you see me do this, this is an electron here. So there's loads of free electrons everywhere. Yeah, and sometimes you might find people refer to them as a sea of free electrons. So a sea of free electrons. Yeah, so there's loads of electrons which are free to move as well. So now what's going to happen is this. If I was to heat it up on this side over here, not only will the ions gain kinetic energy and then vibrate more, passing it on, there we go, 
but the electrons will now gain the kinetic energy and they can whiz through transmitting the heat faster. There we go. So the electrons then help obviously the heat to be transferred. And the reason why is because the electrons are very small, they can gain the kinetic energy and they can travel faster. Obviously because they're free to move as well. So the electrons are free to move and the metal ions are not. So the electrons help the heat to be transferred through that material. Let's put that down. Okay, so electrons and metal ions both gain kinetic energy, but because the electrons are free to move, they can transfer the energy through the material faster. And obviously the whole heat transfer process happens much faster than in the non-metal. So yes, the heat flow is much faster than before. So just comparing it once again, this is non-metal conduction, obviously it's metal ions which can vibrate and pass on those vibrations. But now look, we now have these electrons which help the whole process. Wonderful. Okay, so test your understanding with the following real life example. Let's say we have the following. Okay, so what about this scenario? Let's say your mom makes you a cup of tea and she places a wooden spoon into it and a metal spoon into it at the same time. And then you come around and you touch it from the top. Which one's going to be hotter? Which one is it? Well, it's obviously about the material itself. The metal fork, well, we know that metals are good conductors. So the metal is Obviously, this is a good conductor. So this is a good conductor. And obviously, we know it's a metal. It's a good conductor. And the reason why it's a good conductor, guys, because it has, what does it have free? It has the C of free electrons. So the reason why it's because it has a C of free electrons due to C of free electrons. Of free electrons. There we go. Yeah, and as you can see, wood, it's an insulator and therefore it's a non-metal. So obviously it will transfer heat, yeah it will, but at a slower rate, guys. Obviously because only the metal ions are moving and not the electrons. Okay, so we're done for another session today. Let's have a recap right from the top. So right from the top, we talked about conduction. That's today's title. Conduction, we had a quick recap about how does heat transfer. Heat always goes from hot to cold. And look at that example, the T goes from 80 degrees Celsius, it will lose heat to the surroundings. Why? It is hotter than the surroundings. Scrolling down, we said that there are three main types of heat transfer. One of them is conduction, second one is convection, and the third one is radiation. And conduction is the heat transfer through solids. So conduction is the heat transfer through solids. Scrolling down, we then said conduction in non-metals. So as you can see in a non-metal, we have our non-metal here. When you heat it up from one side, the metal ions vibrate and they vibrate more and then they pass on that energy on until the whole material is heated up. Yeah, so that's for a non-metal and in actual metal guys we have the following. It's the same as before, we have the metal ions once again. So don't forget these are still the metal ions. But now we have a sea of free electrons because metals have free electrons and these electrons help the heat to be transferred throughout the whole material guys. So these electrons will help the heat to be transferred through the material at a faster rate. Think about it, they're really small, they can gain that energy quicker and then go through. And last of all, we did the following scenario. Your mum makes you a cup of tea, she puts a wooden fork and a metal fork in it. You touch it from the top, which one's going to be hotter? Obviously the metal fork, the reason why it's a metal, therefore it's a good conductor due to the sea of free electrons to help the heat to be transferred. And obviously the wooden fork is an insulator, it's a non-metal. Yes, it will heat up, but not at the same rate. Okay, so I hope you had a good time, guys, discussing the term conduction. I shall see you next time for more cool physics. Make sure you like and subscribe to keep my channel going. Check it out, guys. There's loads of videos, guys. Update yourself and level up.